Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. In today's video, we have another complexion product review. We are reviewing the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. I'm not usually a skin tint kind of girl. Usually I prefer kind of light to medium coverage foundations. However, I was really intrigued by this. So I picked this up in the shade seven and it cost me 49 pounds, yes. 49 pounds sterling for 35 mil. It better be good. So let's just have a look at some of the claims of this skin tint. So it claims to boost skin's moisture levels by 52%. Actually, it is nice to hear a normal figure rather than 200 million percent. It gives you a dewy glow, visibly plumps and smooths the skin. It's lightweight, sheer coverage. Skin looks renewed and healthier. It's vegan and cruelty free. I'm going to apply this. We're going to do a full day wear test and we'll be back later on to answer the questions. How does this wear? And secondly, is it worth the splurge? So without further ado, let's move on to the application. Okay, so we are up close and personal. <laughs> Very up close. Just pop my hair back with a wee headband so that we can see what we're dealing with. So let's have a quick look at my skin and what we'll put into the test today with this tint. So I'll have a little spot on my cheek there. Just decided to come and say hi. I have quite, quite prominent veins. Obviously, as you get older, skin becomes more thin. You can see like quite prominent veins knocking around. I don't usually use foundations or tints under my eyes, but because it's a lightweight skin tint, I might bring it up slightly and see if it covers the veins. We'll give it a whirl. So I'm just giving it a shake. So I picked this up in the shade seven and let's do a quick swatch. So that's what it looks like on the back of my hand. I thought it would be a lot more runny actually than what it is. I would call that, obviously it's a squeezy tube, but I would call that the equivalent of one pump. I think the recommendation for this tint is to pop it on with your fingers, but I don't do that. I can't put products on with my fingers. I might tap a bit of concealer in, but that is as far as I go. I don't know what it is. I just don't feel right using my fingers and it probably would give you a, a really good application, but mm, I'm just not willing to do that. Sorry. Let's do one side and then see how we go. Okay. It feels a lot thicker than what I was anticipating. Okay, it literally blends seamlessly. Feels really nice, actually. Okay, so that's one pump gone on just one half. Is there a difference with, without? Yeah, I mean, there is There is a difference, isn't there? You know, it's... <laughs> okay, so there's there's not a lot of coverage there. You can still see the spot. Mm, it's covered a little bit of the vein, but not a huge amount. I think if somebody was looking at me, they'd think, oh, there's nothing there. But if you look really closely and analyse both sides, you can tell that this has, it's semi evened out the complexion, but my skin is still showing through. Should we do the other side? I don't want to overdo the amount that I'm putting on because I think that kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? If you're piling the product on. I don't buy a lot of skin tints and I prefer to use concealer rather than a skin tint, but maybe that's why I'm going mum. To be totally honest with you, my expectations for skin tints are fairly low. So I'm not, I'm not expecting the coverage that I'd get with a foundation. Not, not even a little bit. My nose in particular is a really problematic area because I have these broken veins, spider veins, whatever you want to call them, a few of them, but because they're, they're on my nose, like they're really noticeable and it's very hard for anything to cover it, even concealer. So it's not really helped with that. All right, so first impressions. It's nice. I would say my skin is looking, as it claimed, it's looking healthy. You know that saying? my skin but better i think it ticks that box it's my skin but it's taken it up a level so i look like me i actually don't look like i have makeup on do i it's just improved 
my skin. I'm surprised at the finish. It said that it would be a dewy finish. I'm not getting dewy. I'm not getting dewy. I'm getting more of a satin finish, which is still really lovely. So I'm liking that. I'm liking the healthy glow that it's giving. It's not detectable on the skin, I wouldn't say. You might disagree, but I wouldn't say it is. Okay, what am I not liking? Well, obviously, it's just not enough coverage for me. Not that I like tons of coverage, but I like, you know, I like a good evening out. And I like problematic areas to be covered a little bit more. So I don't like that. But then again, my expectations are lower than it would be for a foundation. However, not cheap. As I've said, this is expensive. So I do feel like my, my expectations are quite a bit higher for this product. Thinking when I use this next, that I will probably conceal problematic areas first. I don't want to go mad with the concealer today because I want to see how the tint itself is performing. So I'll probably go a bit concealer here under my eyes and I think that's it. And we'll see how it performs on its own. I won't do powder. Um, just for reference, my skin is normal to dry. Right, I'm going to go and I'm going to finish off the rest of my makeup, see how it sits over the top of it, and we'll be back. So I'm back and I finished the rest of my makeup. I actually forgot to mention earlier that I'd only prepped my skin with my usual Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream just to give it a fair kind of review because that's all usually I would normally use on a daily basis. I didn't go mad with the complexion products. I used some concealer under my eyes, a little bit of concealer on my nose, tried to cover up the little spot that the skin tint didn't cover, but I didn't go mad. My current favorite concealer, the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. I've not set my face at all. I didn't put any powder under my eyes and I didn't put any on my nose. I didn't put any anywhere. I just wanted to see how this tint performs on its own. And then I put a teeny little bit of bronzer on and a tiny little bit of liquid blush. So first impressions, I don't think it's given me the dewy glow that it stated in the claims. It doesn't feel greasy, it doesn't feel heavy, it definitely feels lightweight. I would definitely agree that my skin is looking a lot healthier than it was before. Your skin but better, definitely feels like that. First impressions are definitely good, but the questions that I want to answer by the end of the day are, how will this wear? How will it fare? on a full day of busyness. And number two, is this really worth 49 pounds sterling? At the moment, I would say, no, no, it's not. I don't feel like there's anything absolutely special about this skin tint, but maybe it will prove me wrong by the end of the day. Don't get me wrong, it feels lovely. It feels absolutely gorgeous on the skin. It doesn't actually feel like I'm wearing anything at all, but is it worth that? expense? That's the question that we need to answer. I will go off about my day now. I will be back to check in this evening with my final thoughts. So I'll see you all then. Okay guys, sorry for the lighting. It is getting really dark, really fast here now in Ireland. It is just past 7pm. So I've had this skin tint on now for around about eight and a half hours. And I think I'm ready with my conclusion. I'm going to be totally real with you. I didn't want to like this skin tint. I didn't want to like it. You could possibly tell when I was putting on the skin tint. I wasn't massively over impressed. I think because it cost quite a lot of money and I was just expecting to be absolutely wowed immediately. That didn't happen. I wasn't wowed immediately. But as the day has gone on, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like my feelings have changed. A really pivotal point for me was when I got into the car. And usually when I'm in the car and I have a look in the mirror, I'll get quite a big dose of reality. I can usually see all of the flaws, all of the imperfections, you know, all the things I hate about the product. But I looked in the mirror and I really liked it. And I just, I didn't want to love it, but I do. I don't know what sorcery this is. I really don't. I don't know whether it's because it, it is your skin. You can see your skin, but it's your skin looking really lovely. Obviously, it has worn a little bit throughout the day. Like my forehead is looking shiny, but the staying power, especially around my cheeks, around this area, 
has been pretty amazing. I was not expecting that at all. And usually when I get to this point in the day, eight to 12 hours in, I'm usually looking a little bit more on the greasy side. Whereas this, I mean, I would happily like head out again without touching up. I think that I've enjoyed it so much because it doesn't look like I am fully caked on. Do I think the skin tint is for everybody? No, definitely not. If you're wanting medium coverage, full coverage, then you need to skip this completely. Despite how much I really like it, despite how healthy my skin looks, how well it's worn, do I think this skin tint is worth the money? I have to say that I don't think it is. Yeah, I love it. Yes, I'm going to use it. I will continue to use it and probably repurchase it. If I was to use this every day, I would run out pretty quickly because I needed two, I say two pumps, it wasn't two pumps, two pump sized amounts I needed to cover my face. So you would run out pretty quickly and you would be spending a lot of money. If you're willing to splurge and you want to treat yourself, I would say go for it. But I would say hand on heart that there would be skin tints that are way more affordable that I'm sure you would love just as much. Just being real, I actually think I prefer this to the foundations that I've tried this month. I definitely like it better than the matte uh, Radiant Serum Foundation. I like it better than the Glossier. I would definitely reach for this over those. So yeah, they are my final thoughts. So there's my review of the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. I hope that some of this video has been useful and I'm really grateful for you stopping by to watch it. So until the next one, take care and I'll see you then. Bye bye.